آزادی بیان یعنی لون تیو فری سپیچ I speak as a former fanatic uh, who knows very well what it's like to hound other people for holding opinions I don't like. In fact, many of you will be familiar with Malcolm Bradbury's superb book of campus evil, uh, The History Man. Uh, and I, when I read it, I recognized in the early chapters, which describe an attempt to prevent a person very similar to Hans Eysenck from speaking, I recognize in it myself and many of my comrades and all the ghastly things that we did in the completely certain belief uh, that what we were doing was right and good. Uh, I now have to say that I know that this was not so, uh, but at the time no one could have persuaded me otherwise. Uh, any of us could go tonight, uh, it's always open, or tomorrow morning to the bank of victimhood and cash in our opinions on social, moral and political matters and trade them in for feelings if we wanted to. And this seems to me to be what the fanatic does. Uh, it, the, the, the opinions which he or she holds become so totally part of their personality, merge into their souls so much, that any dissent from them becomes wholly and utterly unacceptable, morally hateful, and worthy of extinction. This is the thing we really need to understand, is the origin of this, and it's the thing which most interests me about it. But I would like just to point out one or two things uh, that were actually said. Um, by Stephanie, which struck me as very interesting. Uh, she was concerned, for instance, that some of the things that were said about, about trans people were incitements to violence, and she found these to be disgraceful. She was, uh, as I understood it, uh, took the view that anybody who had any kind of elite platform, as we do here this evening, and as Stephanie does here this evening, uh, was privileged and therefore open to criticism, so she's opened herself to it. Uh, she, was, she was cross about all these things, and then when it turned out that somebody who I think was one of her allies had jokingly uh, hashtagged some tweet, whatever that is, with the, <laughs> with, the, uh, with the words, kill all white men, this was a joke, uh, which I do not believe uh, she would necessarily think if, it's, if, the, if it had been kill all somebody else, let's not name anybody who she might find uh, that it would be wrong to kill. Uh, and so it seems to me there's an almost total lack of consciousness among the censors uh, while they're doing it about what they're doing. And what we really ought to do, uh, whether it should be best done by mockery uh, or sympathy or um, buying them cups of tea or whatever it is, somehow or other we have to take them gently to one side and explain to them that one day they will realize that they are completely and utterly mistaken. They've mistaken one thing for another. They've mistaken speculation and opinion for certainty and fact. They've mistaken their own, their own captivation with an idea which they believe to be good uh, for the truth, and that this is invariably wrong and dangerous, and that they should be told that one day, uh, properly nurtured and with a fair amount of reading education, they will reach the stage which the rest of us have reached and realize that most of the things they said all their life were wrong. Uh, and to bear that in mind now.